Hello everyone and welcome back to another TSW2 video. Today I'm going to be checking out the new Class 313 Loco DLC that was just released for TSW2 on Thursday, October 28th. We're going to be checking out the introduction for the Class 313 and we're going to be checking out the first scenario in the journey which is Double Trouble. Before we get into the video, I'm going to ask all of you to hit the like button if you are if you haven't already and hit the subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Also, don't forget, you can become a channel member by clicking the link in the description below if you would like to support the channel even more. Let's get into it. Okay, so we are starting up the introduction to the class 313. Let's see what they have in store for us. Oh, 313201. Welcome I to this drive is the a train unit in Today you'll be learning Heritage to drive this class 313-2 electric multiple unit in southern livery. This brief introduction will cover critical driving controls and passenger operations. Climb aboard to get started. Okay, I'm going to get on to onto the train, but first, let's get these settings settings configured. Every time I start up the game, the settings are always messed up. I'm not sure why. It's just fixed all of that. All right, we should be good. But I believe a uh, three one three two zero one is actually the unit that's in BR Blue livery in real life. And I am actually trying to make this livery. Um, I was trying before I started up this uh, recording. It's very difficult to work with the three one three and some of the new trains in the livery designer. Over here we're inside of the front of the train, the cab unit. Very similar. Take to a the seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. But as well, I was saying, um, very similar to the 314. Have this door that opens up into the passenger compartment. I believe this is actually a ladder on a 314. This might be a platform gap thing right here. But let's go into the actual cab of the unit. To activate the cab, insert the master key. Alright, master key. Reverse her into neutral. Oh, GSMR radio came on. I really like that they've included the GSMR radio. It's, uh, it just think. Oh, we can increase the brightness. It's just a little bit of the detail that adds to the immersion a bit. I like that. Um, some of you may be wondering why I'm actually doing this type of video on it. I'm just trying to, um, experiment a bit with certain things on the channel, you know. Um, first time driving the 313 and I kind of want to make some videos on it. Let's get the auxiliaries set up. But I will be making a lot of videos on the class 313, um, including a livery designer video, the BR blue livery, as I was mentioning before. I can turn this off. Hopefully they add the GSMR radio to more trains in the game. It does um, increase the immersion a bit more. You know, it would be nice to actually insert a head code into this and get it working the correct way it works in real life. But this little thing that we have here where we're able to work the brightness and stuff, it's, it's good so far, you know. Let's get the headlights set up. The reverser is used to set the direction of travel. I would love to be able to configure some announcements and stuff up here. Got our TPWS stuff. So good. Forward. Release our brakes. So This train is now ready to depart. Use the throttle to apply power and get moving. Now, as I was saying, from what I know of the uh, Class 313, this is a camshaft uh, driven train, which I believe means um, if you apply a certain amount of throttle, so let's say we put it into notch 2 throttle, it's going to give us that notch 2 unless we um, pull back on it until no uh, power. That's just what I have uh, what I know of the camshaft driven train so it's similar to the uh baker Lou line stock the 72 stock and uh this train uses a camshaft controller to deliver power to the train in order to reduce power you will first have to set the throttle to off before raising it to the required notch see matt explained it right there keeping to speed limits is important 
If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the train brake. But the train is pretty nice. I do like it so far. Um, I remember uh, Matt was saying don't mess with the DSD or something like that um, because it was configured uh, incorrectly in the game. So I won't be messing with that, any of that today. I'm just going to be playing with the AWS systems. Oh, here we have a red signal coming up here. Feels pretty weird to be on East Coastway again now that uh, London to Brighton came out. I think that signal is actually for the opposite track. Um, but yeah, it's pretty weird to be operating on East Coastway now, coming down through a Lover's Walk depot uh, instead of doing it on London to Brighton and seeing Gatwick Express trains. I do hope that in the future, you know, maybe if Adam's team does another pass through on the East Coastway route. We can see some AI Gatwick Express trains and some new 377s and stuff. And hopefully we get 377s on the uh, actual Seaford branch. Because if you don't know already, uh, they had to remove all the 377s off of the Seaford branch to give us the 313s. I am liking the, um, the track noise we're getting with this train. Pretty realistic. So that is a good sign. Here we see a 313 in Brighton here. Real cool. Reminds me a lot of operating the 314 on Cathcart Circle. And I don't really have an issue with that because I really did enjoy operating the 314s. I only wish that we, uh, we're able to operate a six car variant of the train instead of just uh, operating uh, operating three car variants the whole time. I really do op like operating uh, longer trains. Pretty close to the platform edge. Get behind that yellow line there. And let's bring it to a smooth stop. Let's turn our DRA on. Full service brakes. Take a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe, and then unlock the doors. Ooh, I want to unlock the doors with the guards key. To travel out of Brighton, we'll have to change ends. Let's do this now while the passengers are boarding. All right, let's shut down the cab. Marker lights, tail lights, tail lights. There we go. Uh, all of that should be good. Guards key out. Get the AWS on. With this cab shut down, head to the other end of the train and bring it into operation. I'm happy uh, we have the 313 finally in the game. It's nice to see it um, out after so long of waiting for it. It's been over a year. And it's pretty nice to see it in the game. It looks realistic. Finally, we'll see more uh, of a variety of trains on the East Coastway route and on London Commuter since uh, it is playable on that route, even though it's only on a few services. Now we've changed ends and completed our passenger boarding, set the doors to locked. Let's get that on. GSMR. Compressor. Let's not mess with any of that. Dynamic brake I want to mess with a bit, though. Because I was, um... Oh, it was already on. Let's turn that off. I did uh, watch a stream where Matt was driving the 313, and he was saying something about Southern not using the uh, dynamic brakes. So let's see how the train behaves. Take this train those. to Moolscombe, stopping at London Road, unguided, and see how you get on. All right, let me see. Let's try and uh, get this run in without the, um, the HUD on. 
I do know how to operate a bit of East Coast Way without the HUD. Um, I was planning on making a route guide for it, um, but I didn't have enough time. But um, I think I do remember how to operate a bit of this route without the HUD on. I know that there's a 20 section coming out of uh, Brighton, either 20 or 25. But this train is pretty cool. I'm happy to see another uh, Loco DLC in TSW. Hopefully we could get a little more in the future. I'm very interested in seeing what DTG does with the, the next few British routes they're making for the game, you know? They haven't really announced anything new. But we do have another roadmap coming up this Tuesday, so I'm very interested in seeing what's on that roadmap. Hopefully it's a new British route or a new American passenger route, but one can really only hope. Right, let's increase our speed. Got a 30 limit coming around here on the London Road Viaduct. And I believe this is a downhill gradient, so I'm just going to coast here. And since I'm not too familiar with the braking on this unit, I am going to break a little bit earlier than I usually would. I think right here should be good. The sounds remind me a lot of the uh, 314 on Cathcart Circle. Sound extremely similar, especially the traction motor noise and the AWS alarm. to a stop and open the doors ah look at that what a perfect stop all right and let's get a nice little screenshot of the train here Now, I did see that with uh, the patch notes for this week, DTG included the uh, rush hour passengers on uh, the East Coastway route. And I'm very interested in seeing how that looks, um, what stations is going to be uh, majorly populated, and which is going to be pretty empty. Uh, empty. I'm really interested in seeing the new rush hour passenger system on some of these older routes. Let's turn this GSMR radio on. Hmm, for some reason it's not coming on. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So GSMR closed means it's on and open means it's off. Gotta get used to that. But here we are gaining a bit of speed in it. It's pretty loud. are over speeding a bit let's lower that just gonna keep the brakes on since we are approaching the next station and here we are at miles Cone. this station that s marker is hidden behind one of the uh, station signs so got to be cautious of that right there oh, want us to lock the doors quickly nice work 
That concludes all the basics of operating this train. That was a fun run. I can see I'm going to enjoy operating the, uh, the 313 on East Coastway. And we did get a gold medal, so that's a good sign. But I'm going to see how long the next scenario is and uh, what they have in store. And I'll see you here when we finally load that up. With the power of editing, we go. And, like I said, with the power of editing, we go. Here we are loading up the, the first scenario in the journey list, Double Trouble. Here we are at Brighton, 377 leaving there. Welcome to Brighton. A shortage of trains means that 313s are running in pairs between Brighton and Lewis. Today we will be driving to Seaford and performing an uncoupling procedure at Lewis. Pretty cool. Let's get started. Just enable the guard's key right here. Get in the train. Let's get everything set up. Oh, but first, let's turn off those um, objective marker stuff. We don't need uh, any help. We are experienced. All right, let's get the train set up. Um, all of that should be good. Let's turn on the headlights. Boom. Boom. All right. We should be good now. Really enjoying the cab in this. Pretty nice. I wonder if DTG is going to attempt to make a West Coastway route in the future. Maybe we can see these uh, 313s and possibly the 377s running down to um, Portsmouth, I believe. That could be cool. Maybe see some uh, SWR trains. I'd love to see uh, an SWR DLC in the future, you know. Uh, finally gets to see London Waterloo recreated in the game. I think that'd be cool. Now, I know I haven't really been... um uploading too much on YouTube in this past week or so. I've just been really kind of, I don't really want to say worn out, but um, I've just been working on other stuff and uh, taking a bit of a break. But I'm definitely back now. We're doing this 313 um, scenario and I will be uploading the C2C suggestion um, or actually by the time this video comes out, I think the C2C suggestion should be out already. Um, that might have been yesterday. I am recording these videos a bit in advance, so um, I'm still trying to work out when each video is going to kind of come out and all that. But um, yeah, I'm getting back into the groove of actually like doing everything. You know, I plan to uh, C2C suggestion, this video, the 313 BR blue livery, um, maybe a roadmap recap. Um, definitely some, some new stuff coming on the channel and uh, re the return of some series, you know. So I'm definitely working on that and getting all of that situated. But, uh, yeah, I'm back. You don't got to worry about, well, when Zeno's going to upload an another uh, video on TSW, you know. I know I've been gone for a bit. And I've gotten some questions on um, where my suggestion series has gone. And that's, that's still around. Um, I have been focusing on a lot of other videos lately, though. Um... And the reason for that is those videos just seem to do a bit better than the suggestions, you know. My channel did start out with the um, suggestion videos and stuff, but every good thing comes to a close. Every good thing comes to an end, you know. I didn't expect the suggestion series to stay around for the whole lifespan of my channel. But um, it's, it's kind of getting to that point where it's like, eh, you know, we want to see more different type of stuff. You know, and I'm noticing that. But the suggestion videos aren't going nowhere. I'm just going to be focusing on them. 
a little less than I have in the past. Um, so instead of coming out like once every week or once every two weeks or whatever, they're going to be a bit less frequent. Um, but keep in mind, I am still making suggestion videos, but I'm not taking any more suggestions for suggestion videos, if that makes any type of sense. Um, basically, what I used to do in the past was um, I would take like some of your suggestions from the comment section and stuff like that. I'm not really doing that anymore, mainly because I have so many suggestions that are lined up that I'm supposed to be making. Um, let's close that. Um, but I have so many suggestions lined up that I want to make in the future. Um, that's on my list like I still haven't gone to the next New York City subway suggestion the next Metro North suggestion the next London Underground suggestion There's still a lot of stuff that I need to do for suggestion videos um, And if I just continue adding more and more I'm never gonna get to certain things So I'm just gonna be uh, cutting down on the suggestions uh, vid videos for now um, Let's not turn those on um, but I'm gonna cut down on the suggestion videos for now, but um, when the suggestion list kind of, um, when I kind of get through more stuff on the suggestion list, I'll definitely be t taking, um, some more. Now, um, I did mention in a previous video that I was going to be making a series called Unfinished Add-ons, where I, um, go through certain... I guess certain routes in TSW and talk about like what can be added. Um, so I'm starting with Long Island Railroad, like um, talking about the M9 that could be added, more branches like uh, the Port Washington branch, Port Jefferson, uh, Ron Konkama, and other stuff like that. Um, and that will be coming soon. I've just recently finished the script for that series. Well, the first video in the series, the script for that. So, uh, you, some of you can definitely look forward to that. I'm going to be talking about a lot of the routes in the game. Probably including this one with East Coastway, you know, talking about... They've already added the 313. I don't really see too many other local add-ons that could come for this route. But maybe including some AI services um, running in and out of Brighton with the uh, 700 if they ever add it to the game and the new uh, 387 and possibly uh, switching out to all the old three, uh, 377s on this route for the, um, the new 377s. Possibly adding in the one or two Thames Link service, not Thames Link, Gatwick Express uh, Southern services or to reword that Southern services running 387s that run down East Coast where I believe they run to Eastbourne if I'm not mistaken. So I will be talking about this route but this route you know, it's kind of, I don't want to call it an unfinished uh, add-on because it is pretty finished, to be honest. Um, you know, they've added the whole line from um, Brighton to Seaford. They added a little bit of the Eastbourne branch. And while some trains do go past Eastbourne to Hastings and Orr, it is a nice uh, bit of route here. And there's not much that can be talked about, you know, in terms of adding more to it so this might be one of the routes that comes at a later date in that series but LIRR is something to look forward to um Hopstrack Ryan Rear, Ryan Rear Austin certain routes like that that can just that just have so much potential and so much that can be added to it will definitely come in in a video in that series But yeah, the first video will be on LIRR I'm not sure when that video is going to come out but as I've mentioned before I've already completed the uh, scripting for that video so all I gotta do is record it edit it and then put it out to upload I am finally working on my review too for the uh, London commuter route you know I, I wanted to wait a bit to make a review on the route you know I wanted to wait until I've experienced a lot of the operations that you can do on it uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, London suburban services on that route and I think I'm ready to finally make my review on it you know um, I've done it for a lot of uh, other routes in the game, like uh, Cathcart Circle, Bakerloo. Um, I don't think I did one on Hamburg to Lubeck, but I did it for the Rosa line. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm going to be getting back into making reviews. Maybe not too many reviews, um, only on real important stuff. And I consider the London to Brighton route to be an important route to make a review on. So you can look forward to that. I'm going to be talking about... 
a lot of what was expected from the route and what they exact what exactly they delivered on and stuff like that going to be comparing it to the other two rush hour routes comparing its uh similarities and differences and see what's better what's worse with this route so be on the lookout for that video it's going to be coming sometime in the future hopefully you know if i choose to actually you know um proceed with uh making that video but as some of you may know i've in the past made a whole script for a video and eventually that video never came out so take it with a grain of salt i am trying to work on the review for the london to brighton route another thing that i'm going to be doing for the london to brighton route uh, some of you may know i've talked about it a bit is the points of interest video and i know i've talked about it for about two three weeks now and the video is not out i would like to inform all of you i'm still working on it um i'm currently in the recording stage of that project so i'm recording uh my voice lines for the script and stuff all i gotta do is edit it and then upload it i'm not gonna say it's gonna be out this week but i am planning on releasing it very very soon so be on the lookout for that video as i've said before i took a break but more stuff is still coming for the channel and you don't have to worry too much about like uh you know things falling off on the channel um series i'm not doing anymore and stuff like that don't worry a lot of it's going to be coming back just wanted to take a bit of a break and focus on some other things like uh my minecraft new york city subway series i've finally gotten that started first station i'm going to be doing is harlem 148th street on the number three line I uh, recently went to that station about, I think it was last week, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, yeah, it was Wednesday. It was definitely Wednesday. Um, but I went to that station and I got a couple of reference pictures um, to help me create the route. Or maybe I shouldn't even say route to help me create the station. Um, got a bit of reference uh, pictures and a little reference video of the mezzanine and the platforms in the yard that's actually connected to the station um and some of you have actually voted to for me to uh, upload that video on my second channel uh and if you don't know i do have a second channel it's called mystic transit the link to that will be in the description down below but that's my uh i guess irl uh, transit channel where i I currently have an ongoing series on that channel where I go to the least used station, kind of like Geoff Marshall in London, but I go to the least used station in New York City subway for each line. So I've already done um, every line up to the F. Right now, the next video is the M train of the 6th Avenue line, and that's at Seneca Avenue. Um, I still haven't gone out and gotten the footage from that station yet, but that video will be coming relatively soon. But, um... Yeah, the Minecraft series will be getting uploaded on that channel. So you can look forward to that. If you were looking forward to that, be sure to subscribe to that second channel. And uh, leave a like on that video when it does come out. So I can know that all of you um, are enjoying it. Or all of you want to see more. Because it is a series I've been wanting to work on for a while now. And I've just now gotten started on it. Hoping, uh, I'm hoping it does uh, pretty well. Because uh, it is something... Um, I just plan to look back on at a certain point, like look back, look back on the finished product, um, and just say, "Wow, I really did build the whole subway system." <laughs> it's crazy. 472 stations, I believe, or 474. It's a lot. It's a big task, but um, definitely working on that. One thing I can say about TSW and like the the recent news in TSW and stuff, um, talking about recent news, I just uh, started doing a new type of video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue that type of video on the channel, but interesting. They slowed our speed a bit. Um, that was odd. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue doing that type of video on the channel. Um, the like this week in TSW news and stuff. Um, but that was just kind of like to catch up everyone on some of the stuff I haven't been covering in the past week. But um, one thing I can say that I'm, I'm really happy about is Matt is now the executive producer instead of the senior producer on TSW. And um, the difference in that is now he controls basically the, almost the whole team, if not 
if not some of the team, basically the whole team he now controls and has say over and all of that. And I think that's a pretty good thing for, for the future of TSW, being that he has a lot of goals and uh, ambitions um, that he wants, where he wants to take the game to, you know. So uh, he's talked about, you know, splitting up the team into three separate teams. Um, people who work on American routes, people who work on British routes, and people who work on German routes. So basically, there won't be a difference in quality as much as we've seen before. Because right now, some people who like doing German routes the most uh, work on British routes. Some people who like doing American routes the most work on German routes and so and so. And mixing and matching they aren't really it's not really the best idea being that some people aren't going to be too uh too interested in making a certain type of route for a certain country you know personally me i would like to work on a lot of the german routes in the game but i'm not too good with pzb so i would probably lean more towards the british routes even though i am american you know and a lot of people um kind of don't like probably don't like making certain types of routes so he is going to be splitting the team up into three separate teams and i think that's a a really good idea for the, um, the the TSW team to have for the TSW team basically you know to kind of increase that route quality right, I believe they said we have to uncouple the trains here this pair of trains will now separate with another driver taking the first unit onto Eastbourne and you will be driving to Seaford okay what do you want me to do let me close the window for this driver Oh, wait, we have to shut down the cab, don't we? Yep. Alright, let's run to the next unit. Close that. Oh, it shows it on the uh, countdown clock. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, I think Matt has some really cool ambitions for TSW, and I'm very interested in seeing where he takes the game in the future. Um, because I think if it's in his hands, we're in, we're in store for some good stuff with TSW. Wow. This is the same thing that happened to me on a 314, getting stuck on a fire extinguisher. Wow. Unbelievable. Alright, let's get this set up. Master key. I don't think we should have closed our doors, actually. Okay, that was that was a stupid idea. Um, I don't I don't want to know. There was like three alarms going on at once. I don't want to know why that was happening. Open. Okay, headlights and marker lights. Okay, did I not already uncouple it? All right, there we go. Oh, wow, he's taking off quickly. That's odd, but okay. Let's just get our train set up. But yeah, I'm very, um, very excited to see where he takes the game with his new executive producer uh, job. Hopefully, that means we get some new types of routes in the game. You know, he did, he did kind of hint on some stuff in his newest, his newest stream, and I know we're not really supposed to take that <laughs> with with too much um, merit to it, but um. He did accidentally mention West Coastway, you know, Portsmouth. Maybe we could go to Portsmouth Harbor. I don't know. But um, he did accidentally mention West Coastway, and I'm just I'm just spitballing here. But um, I, I really doubt we're gonna get a West Coastway route. But um, he mentioned West Coastway. He mentioned something about the three eight zeros or whatever. But uh, off of that topic, I don't think they're making. I don't think that means really anything. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see these ambitions and see where he wants to take the game in the future with TSW. And um, hopefully, we get more American passenger routes with that. You know, he has mentioned that he notices that there's a pretty big uh, difference in the amount of British passenger routes we have, the amount of German passenger routes we have, and then we have American passenger routes where we have only two really right now, or three in uh, TSW2 right now with Peninsula Corridor, LIRR, and Boston Sprinter, you know. We need more to kind of show the variety and um, 
kind of show what America really has, you know, a lot of people just think America is freight only, you know, and that's, that's kind of because TSW just focuses on those freight, um, routes and stuff instead of focusing on other things like American metro systems, you know, or North American metro, metro systems as a whole, you know, we have certain things that can be explored, explored like the Montreal Metro, Toronto subway, New York City subway, BART, um, LA Metro, we have commuter rail systems like the Denver RTD, I believe, um, more Long Island Railroad, Metro North, more of the MBTA, the Go Transit. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can be explored in TSW that TSW hasn't really uh, touched on yet. And uh, hopefully with Matt in charge, we, we start to see um, more of that type of stuff. But I'm pretty surprised that a lot of the stuff we did that out of everything we see on the roadmap currently, we don't see anything from the UK. I'm, I'm pretty surprised, you know, being that DTG is a primarily they're, they're based in the UK and they primarily make uh, UK and German routes. Um, we only have one German route currently on the roadmap, two American freight routes and nothing from the UK. I'm pretty surprised on that. But talking about Germany, I'm really interested in seeing what TSG has done with the BR420. It's a train I've been looking forward to for a while now, especially because it's on my uh, favorite or second favorite route in the game. I'm kind of in that state where it's like on whatever day of the week it is, it's my favorite route. Uh, on another day, it's my uh, second favorite route. But uh, Hopstrack Munich to Augsburg, I'm very interested in seeing what TSG has done with the 420. And seeing how they've implemented it into the timetable. Is it going to be something similar to uh, Diesel Legends of the Great Western? Is it going to be something similar to the 38 stock? Where it's a totally totally new timetable um, for the 420. Because we know how substitution works. You know, It's going to be difficult to substitute the 420 in for the 423s. Being that they are uh, two units with different lengths of trains. Um, so I wonder if they're going to substitute it in like the 423s are going to run some services, the 420s are going to run other types of services and stuff like that. I wonder if we're going to be in a, um, in the past, you know, cause the 420s don't actually run on the Munich S-Bahn anymore. I believe they were retired in 2014. So I wonder if it's going to be a timetable from the past, maybe the, uh, 80s, the 70s or whatever, when they first were introduced or a more modern timetable where they're integrating it with the 423s. I wonder how they're gonna, um, you know, implement it in the game. Very interested in that. But it is a train I've been looking forward to for a while. I've seen it in Train Sim Classic. I haven't actually driven it before. Um, I'm very interested in seeing how it will work in the game. Especially since it's on uh, HMA. I just hope that, uh, last gen console players are going to be able to play it on that route as well because we already know how uh how that route is with extra layers and how it performs on gen 8 consoles and stuff i'm really interested in seeing if that's going to be like the first dlc that's exclusive to next gen and pc but um the reason i'm kind of like speculating on a timetable for the 420 is because we've seen multiple different screenshots of uh early act um early looks of the 420 from TSG and um, a lot of those screenshots differentiate between the new type of livery for it, which is the livery we would see um, in a 2014 version of the train and the older type of livery for it that we would see in maybe the 90s version of the train or whatever um, and I'm just I'm interested in seeing if it's going to be present in two different timetables that'd be cool and I've I, I'd expect a lot from TSG, being that they've put in so much time and work into the 423 to make it sound accurate, make it sound correct, true to life, to make it look the way it does. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of faith in TSG. So I expect nothing less than high quality uh, content like we saw with the 423 and other trains that they've made in the game like the br101 i believe was made by them as well and while it does have some weird physics uh, issues it does look amazing okay. 
So yeah, that's another type of train I'm looking forward to seeing in the game. But here we are approaching Southeast. Gonna just lower our speed a bit more. And here we go. Open. Let's get moving to the next station, New Haven Town. Really interested in seeing if uh, DTG is going to do anything else with Scotland, you know? Scotrail, or whatever type of route they can make in Scotland. Maybe the East Coast Main Line up to uh, Edinburgh or Waverley. Talking about the East Coast Main Line, uh, have any of, you, any of you heard about the new, uh, I believe they're an open access operator, Lumo. Lumo trains on uh, the East Coast Main Line running from, I believe, King's Cross or St. Pancras, whatever that station is um, in London. Um, excuse my incompetence. But um, to uh, Edinburgh Waverley, I've seen a couple videos on it. Um, very, very interested um and seeing how how they work um on the east coast main line as the kind of budget option to get up um north so their ticket prices and wow compared to L L N E R, very 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 good competition and i wonder if they would be open to being in tsw with um I wonder if DTG would be open to uh, partnering with them to bring them to TSW with a potential East Coast Mainline route. Right now, the East Coast Mainline and the West Coast Mainline are kind of the two routes from uh, the UK that's like, they're the two main routes that everybody wants to see. Uh, whereas everything else is like, eh, that would be a good route, but like the East Coast Mainline and the West Coast Mainline are two of the most heavily requested UK routes that we still don't have in the game and I highly doubt if we do get those in the game it will be anything near the full length of them you know if we do get the west coast mainline I assume it to be the west coast mainline south uh, portion of it between um, Houston and I believe Birmingham and if we get the east coast mainline I assume it to be the north version from Edinburgh not sure where else. Um, not familiar with a lot of the stations on the East Coast Main Line. So I'm not sure how far they would go with that. Let's slow down for this 35 limit up here. It's pretty hard on the brakes. go and we're approaching New Haven town here gonna be experiencing some extremely low speed limits around here I'm not sure why just like I'm not sure um, why there's a 10 mile an hour speed limit coming into Lewis I've heard someone say it's because of the curve at Lewis but um that curve looks like trains can handle that maybe like 40 30 miles an hour at, at the least I think 10 is a bit a bit much for a speed limit well a bit low I guess I should say there we go another perfect stop 
see, I'm pretty used, I, I, I guess I'm getting used to the brakes a lot more than I would have thought, mainly because I've driven the 314 a lot on Cathcart Circle, and the brakes do behave similarly. It's just the um, acceleration that's a bit different, which is surprising. I would have expected the 3, because um, the three. it seems like the 313 um, has better acceleration than the 314. I find that a bit surprising being that the 313 is the unit that gets uh, its power from the third rail, and usually third rail units don't get um, as much power as uh, overhead units. Um, usually trains that use overhead wires um, are able to accelerate much faster than third rail um, trains. So I'm pretty surprised. It's either that it's um, it has a higher top speed or um, it accelerates faster. I'm not really sure which one it is. But it does feel a bit more uh, punchy, a bit more quicker than its uh, sister, the 314. Okay, let's slow back down for that 20 limit. I did not notice that. Happy with this unit that they did implement a little bit of the GSMR radio. Even if it is just turning it on or whatever, it does add a little bit to the immersion and stuff. Hopefully they could get it to its full um, its full implementation where we're able to enter a head code and stuff like that. And hopefully that means we'll be able to use... Okay, let's stop. There we go. Hopefully that means we'll be able to use finally some of these destination displays, like imp imp um, inputting the code into it and then getting a destination on the front, like how it said Seaford up here. Now that I think about the 313, I'm, I'm surprised they were able to get this, these uh, pictures in so well, you know? The pictures of pictures on the train, basically. It's crazy. I'm surprised they were able to get that looking so good, though. Now all they need to do is get hull trains done. Let's actually get the outside view of the train. Oh, wait, I had DRA on, didn't I? Um. Um. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's contact the signaler. Denied. Wait for signal to change. Okay. I guess we'll wait for the signal to change then. Let's check if there's anything that's blocking. Oh, yep. Another 313 unit. Oh, let's get this outside view of it pulling into the station. This will be cool right here. Got a good number of people waiting here for the train. Here it comes pulling in right now. That's cool. I would have loved to see some of these units running on the uh, Bray Mainline, but I do understand why they don't run. They're kind of, they're too slow for the Bray Mainline. And I assume since they are older units, they will be more prone to breakdowns and stuff. You kind of can't have that on a busy Mainline like the Bray Mainline, you know. You'll be holding up Thameslink, Gatwick Express, and Southern Services at the same time, and I assume that Govia does not want all three of their um, main, I guess, cash cows being delayed behind one 313 that just decided to have a door malfunction at a station like Clapham. So we have just two stations left, one at Bishopstone and the last one, I believe, at Seaford. And then that will be the end of this run. Really enjoy uh, the Class 313 now. It's a shame that it's only playable on one type of service, or two types of service, really. 
with the the Lewis service. But it's it's a shame that it's only playable on um East Coast way. Hopefully we do get like that West Coast way uh route in the future so we're able to play the 313 uh, more. But it is pretty cool. Hopefully they get the uh the layering sorted out on Brian Mainline because I would love to bring these down to Brian Mainline running into I believe the Selhurst Depot. That'd be cool. Or just to see it, you know, operating a uh, Gatwick Express service whizzing by East Croydon and seeing a 313 slowly creeping into the Selhurst Depot. I think that'd be cool. But here we are approaching Bishopstone. I assume that's going to be an AWS alarm coming up here out of Bishopstone, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing there is a... Um, a yellow signal. Yep, right there. But let's get our eyes off that yellow signal and onto this stop marker right here because I feel like we're going to overshoot it a bit. Yep, we are. Yeah, we're still on the platform. Not too bad. Did I not? Oh, I didn't. Oh, because the guard's key comes out when you... Oh, I get it. The guard's key comes out when you uh, lock the doors, I assume. This is cool. Got a good number of passengers. Let's see if there's anyone on the train. Only two passengers in the first car. Wow. No one in the middle, in the middle car. Well, one person. Wow. Train's pretty empty. Surprising. Oh, the last car is getting some passengers. I assume no one wants to go to Seaford this time of year. Thought you could hide from me. I saw you, map. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, next and last stop will be Seaford. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Got about just under a mile until Seaford. It's not really much we could do in this cab that we haven't done already in the 314, you know. Wonder if DTG is going to come out with a 315 DLC. Maybe TFL Rail or... Uh, I think they only ran under TFL Rail. I'm not really sure. But uh wonder if we're going to get a TFL Rail DLC. 315, maybe the... Uh, 345 or 345 since I was told to stop to say it individually 345 with um, the Elizabeth line I'd love to see that the reason I haven't made a suggestion on that yet is I'm waiting for the actual Elizabeth line to open first you know it'd be weird to suggest something that's not even you know fully done yet so I'm trying to wait until the Elizabeth line is fully open you know London Liverpool, London, Liverpool Street all the way to um Paddington and Reading want to wait until that's fully open to then make that suggestion video but I'm waiting impatiently on making that you know because I really do want to see the 345s in the game I honestly like the 345s much better than the uh, 710s and any other units as a part of that adventurous series of trains although I am starting to really like the design of the uh 730 to 730 or whatever i believe west midlands have purchased them i'm really interested in seeing how the cap of that unit is going to look because their slanted type of design and them being kind of based off of the electro star and stuff i'm just really interested in seeing how their cab looks but here we are pulling into seaford Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last stop on this train. Thank you for riding with Southern. Just pull up to the bumper block. DRI on. Open them doors. Let's get everything shut off. All right, that's the end of that service. Now it says not in service. I look like I'm upset. I don't want to drive trains no more. 
but that's all good and done gold medal that's what's up level four with the 313 now okay and level 226 all together out of tsw so much i play the game <laughs> um but i hope you guys enjoyed that video um i enjoyed operating the 313 i think it's a pretty cool train pretty similar to the 314 um don't expect a review on it i don't really think a local dlcs need real big reviews and stuff like that um but just coming from me i really do like the 313 and if you enjoy operating on east coastway a bit and you want to operate some of those london brian services with the 313 i suggest picking it up but if you did enjoy this video hit the like button if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me even further, consider becoming a channel member with the link in the description below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.